Mm-hmm. Who's first? So I guess just to start with, I mean, what made you decide now to not seek re-election? You know, uh, I was first elected to the legislature 14 years ago. Um, this will be uh, 24 years in public service with my work at the school board and city council. And my wife and I had had a discussion over the last number of months, and we just decided that it was time, you know, to move on. I think there's always opportunity for renewal in a political party and in a government. But I think we need to remember that there's always time for renewal personally. And Christine and I had had a long conversation about that. We talked to our kids, and we just thought it was time to uh, spend more time in Saskatoon, more time with our family. And so uh, we think the government's in a great place, the position of the government moving forward into the election. And so we just thought that it was it's the most appropriate time, I think, for renewal in my constituency and, and for renewal in the government and in the party. I believe uh, you were acclaimed uh, September 13th of 2023. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder what, what kind of changed between then and now? Well, nothing really. I mean, we've had some conversations about it. When I was, acc- when I was acclaimed uh, uh, last year, we certainly had every intention of running in the, in the fall election this year. But uh, we spent a little bit of time talking about where we were going to go and what we were going to do for the next four years. And I think it's fair uh, to my family and it's fair to me that, uh, that we, uh, we spent a little bit more time in Saskatoon. There wasn't anything in particular. It was just, I, we think it's just... Uh, time to change direction and uh, and have a little bit of personal renewal personally and with my family. I'm talking about staying in Saskatoon and spending a bit more time there. There's a job opening up there. Is there? There is. Yeah. Oh, I know boy, there's been I some heard. rumblings about that. Are you, are you interested in running for mayor of Saskatoon? Well, t- today my, my responsibility is the Minister of Advanced Education. I have some significant responsibilities to the government. Uh, my sole focus now is on uh, the work that I have to do. Our budget is going to be coming down and I'm very uh, uh, happy with the work that I'm doing as the Minister of Advanced Education. So that's going to be my sole focus. What I do in the future, we're certainly giving some consideration to that and some discussions with my wife. Uh, I understand there's a, a job, but I'm uh, not applying for it. Not yet. What's next for you? Well, we're going to give that some thought. I think we're going to take a little bit of time. Um, legislative session doesn't end until the end of May. So as I've said, my responsibilities as the Minister of Advanced Education are important to me. Uh, supporting my sector, it's a very, very important sector in this province. And so I'm going to continue to uh, to do the work that I need to do to support my sector and uh, to support my government and my premier. Uh, once the session's over, then we'll start giving some thought to where we might uh, where we might go. But there's lots of opportunities in Saskatoon, both personally and, and for my family, and we're going to explore those. Um, I want to ask you about Bill 137. You weren't there for the vote on third reading. Why was that? Uh, I had another engagement that day. That day was a meeting of the uh, Senate of the University of Regina. I tend to uh, uh, attend those Senate meetings. That's an important opportunity for me to uh, meet with faculty, meet with administration. Uh, And so that's why I wasn't there that day. And you were the Attorney General in 2014 when you amended the Human Rights Code. I was. So how do you feel about that bill, knowing that you were the minister who did that? Well, I must tell you that uh, that was one of my proudest moments as a legislator to bring those changes through to the Human Rights uh, Human Rights Code. Um, as I say, I was very, very proud of that, the work that we did, a unanimous vote on the floor of the legislature. Um, so I was very, uh, very proud of that, that work. Uh, I think that there's some foundation to the uh, legislation that was brought forward by the government. And so uh, to the extent that parents need to have a role in raising their children, I support that. Um, so, uh, but again, based on the legislation that I had brought forward and the floor as the Attorney General, I'm very proud of that legislation. Was there anything that you weren't able to do that you wish you did do? Oh, there's lots of things, but you know, I think that we've accomplished a lot of things uh, in my roles, in the various roles as, uh, as, as Minister of the Crown, both as Attorney General and Deputy Premier, Minister of Education. Uh, I take those roles all very, very seriously. One of the other things, uh, uh, we amended the Constitution. Uh, around a claim that was brought by the Canadian Pacific Railway. I was very proud of the work that the legislature did. Another, again, another unanimous vote on the floor of the legislature and the work that we did uh, with the Senate uh, and the House of Commons to ensure that that legislative change uh, to the Constitution was made. So I'm very, very proud of that. But you always leave with unfinished business, but we know that there's good people in this government, good people in this legislature that are going to continue the good work for the people of Saskatchewan. Is it your expectation to remain minister until the next election? Well, it's uh, at the whim of the Premier, but uh, so far he's going to allow me to continue to remain in my position as the minister. Uh, we have a budget that's coming up that we're going to be presenting uh, in uh, next month, uh, and that's going to tell a story, I think. Uh, but for the time being, he's going to allow me to continue in my role. Are you, are you flattered by speculation that people may want to 
Well, that's a really good question. You know, it's it is really flattering. It's humbling that there are people in the city of Saskatoon that think I can, I can do that. I think the city of Saskatoon needs some some strong leadership at a very difficult time in the city. And I know that there are people in the city of Saskatoon who have that strength uh, to lead the city of Saskatoon. But I can tell you, I'm, I was very flattered and humbled to have people uh, reach out to me uh, to suggest that I might have the talent to do that. What does it mean to you to be leaving at the same time as some of your other colleagues who were you know, fairly high profile for a long time, not a lot of uh, you know, big jobs in cabinet, like Don Morgan, and Dustin Duncan, and uh, well, Deputy Premier? Yeah, I, I must tell you, it's always it's always sad to leave. I remember the first day I walked up the steps of this legislature, and one of the proudest days that, that, that I had in public life is to walk into this building as a representative and the MLA for Saskatoon Northwest. So it'll be a sad day when you have to walk out. But as I said, there are, are good people in caucus. Uh, the election will return other good people that can take those roles. And my father used to say that the uh, the graveyard is full of indispensable people. So it's always time to move on, I think, and give other people a chance, bring other perspectives uh, to the floor of the legislature, and to the caucus and the cabinet room. So uh, I'm very I'm looking forward to seeing those new faces because I know that they're going to take the responsibility of government very very seriously. Just on your acclimation back in the hall, like what changed specifically from there till now? Well, my wife and I went on a bit of a holiday and we had a bit of a conversation about it. And sometimes you have to get away from where you work to kind of get a new perspective on things. And I think that's what happened for us. So we went away in January for a little while and got a little bit of time on my motorcycle and uh, give you a chance to think, right? And so um, that's really all that changed. Just a new perspective that you don't get when you're kind of in the building in the office every day. So uh, that's really what changed. Thank Thanks you. very much, you guys.